Hello, and welcome back to the unofficial guide to NDI. In this video, we're going to be talking more about networking and focusing on bandwidth considerations and what you should know about NDI specifically. So here we go. We've been moving right along on this course, and we are at bandwidth considerations. We've talked about the history of NDI. We've talked about the different free software and hardware. All of these videos are available for you to review. If you stumbled upon this video without following up on the rest of what we've learned, the last video specifically is what is a local area network? And this is going to be our two-part video series where we seriously look into networking and the bandwidth requirements. This really makes NDI tick. So at this point, you know what a local area network is. Now let's talk about how your computer communicates online to review kind of how it all works. How does this network traffic from your local area network get all the way to live streaming to Facebook? Well, your computer's connected to your router and it's connected through a router, maybe through an, maybe directly or maybe through a network switch. Depends on how big your network is. But all computers in, that are located on your local area network are likely connected to a router, which can give the computer an IP address. We talked about it can receive it automatically via DHCP, or it can receive it directly and manually using the router as well. And your router responds to the computer when it requests information. So your computer can request information uh, through IP, right? The internet protocol that we use to communicate and it can communicate to the wide area network. So your com computer can send, in from, send and receive information on the local area network inside your firewall, inside your router, between computers, and that's how NDI generally works. But when your computer wants information from Facebook, you might want to download information, or maybe you want to upload, maybe you want to stream live stream to Facebook, that is done through the router and to the wide area network. And I just want you to understand this concept there's the local area network and there's the wide area network. Now, when you live stream via RTMP to Facebook, you are using the upload bandwidth available on, through your router, through your internet service provider. And when you preview your live stream, when you're reading the comments through Facebook, you're actually downloading that information, which is being requested through your router, through the internet service provider, to the servers of Facebook, and then back. So that's how like generally the internet kind of communication works. Now, the main bottleneck that NDI users deal with is actually on the local area network. And it has to do with the bandwidth available to, to send and receive video on your local area network. Now, the three areas where you might be limited, one is the cabling itself. So the cables that connect your computer to the local area network may be, and we'll look at the different bandwidths available, may become a bottleneck where they're limited in the bandwidth they can support. Networking equipment all the way down the chain from the router to the network switch to the wireless access point can also have a limited throughput, right? Limited amount of bandwidth available for you to use. And we're going to understand that. And then finally, the network interface card on your computer, the port you actually plug the Ethernet cable into, is also likely limited in its bandwidth capabilities. And we need to understand these spaces and make sure everything works perfectly. Now, Ethernet cabling. Cat5 cabling has 100 megabits of throughput, 100 megabits of bandwidth. That means you can send and receive 100 megabits of information maximum. Or, and then it just gets cut off. No more can go through. Cat5e which has become the standard and really is the recommended cable, CAT5e or greater, is recommended for NDI because it gives us one gigabit, which is a thousand megabits. And that's a lot of data to use, a lot of bandwidth to use for live video and streaming. CAT6, CAT7, and CAT8 e only increase what we can do, and that's great. And if you have a CAT6, CAT7 cabling, you could do 10 gigabits. You could send hundreds of NDI sources through that cable and we just want you to understand that that is a possible bottleneck 
Now, the other thing that's happening here is that NDI allows you to do some manipulation of the video streams to reduce the overall bandwidth necessary to send and receive the video. So there's two main types. There's NDI HB, also known as NDI high bandwidth, or full NDI as people commonly refer to it. And there's NDI HX. And NDI HX is high efficiency. NDI HX, as you know, if you read the book, was released at NDI 3.0 in 2017. And it totally modernized the deployment of NDI video systems because it allowed for much lower bandwidth connectivity, which, as you will learn, is very valuable when you are trying to manage a network and reduce the bandwidth necessary to do all the different video that you, that you want to do. So at full NDI has less compression than NDI HX. So technically, it looks better in some cases, not always, and sometimes people can't even tell. But NDI HX implies additional compression in order to reduce the bandwidth. And that's the trade-off. But New Tech waited a long time. They waited to use the, the latest compression technologies available. And it was a really big deal when they released HX because it allows us to do so much more and considerably still have a decent video, a really high quality video picture. And we'll look at this today and you'll see it live. Now, SDI, that is the standard video connector and HDMI is similar here. Yeah, when it's uncompressed, it's 3,000 megabits, 3 gigabits of data. That's why they call it 3G SDI. Well, NDI compresses that full bandwidth, which is just unusable on most networks because it's just so much bandwidth, into a usable bit rate stream. And a bit rate is basically the rate at which the data is sent over your network, which requires bandwidth. Now you can see how much smaller NDI is, and then NDI HX is even smaller. So that is kind of at the grand scheme of things. This is what makes video production work right here, is the compression. Now, I want to familiarize you with NDI sources in OBS, because I know most people out there use N N OBS, and NDI is really great with that. And then throughout this course, we've also looked at NDI sources in vMix. One thing you'll notice in both cases is there's a low bandwidth mode now available. So if you're having bandwidth issues, you can quickly toggle on and off the low bandwidth mode. And I'm going to go ahead and open up OBS, and I'm going to add an NDI source. But before I do so, I want to show you guys Task Manager. Now, you can get to Task Manager in Windows, and I, I'm not a, Ma a big Mac user. I love Macs, but I'm, I, don't, I'm not, I don't have one here. Um, and one of the things that Mac has as well as an alternative to this solution. But what you can see here is we can see not just the CPU and memory usage, but the network usage. So something is using 13% of my network. What is that? Ah, the NDI screen capture. So this is important, right? We're seeing right now that 13% of my overall gigabit network connectivity is being used by my screen capture. So that's 125 megabits per second. And it is literally saying here, look at that, it's 13%. Um, and so 13% is quite a lot. And we can actually sort by how, how it works and everything. So that's a full bandwidth NDI source. And we can actually look at our ethernet and you can see here, it's saying the total throughput um, is right here. And it's showing kind of what the Ethernet connectivity is doing. Now, what I want to do here is I want to go to OBS and I want to add an NDI source. And this is going to be a, an NDI HX source. And I'm going to pull in an, a known NDI HX source. You can see they all are discoverable directly through OBS. And I'm going to go over here into our ceiling camera. And I could choose lowest bandwidth, but I'm going to choose highest because I know it's an NDI HX video feed already. And here it is here. Um, so you can see here that it's low latency and it is pretty darn good quality. Um, you know, we were looking at my phone earlier and you can see it's, it's really good quality. That's NDI HX. It's incredible. 
what they're doing. Now, if we go back to Task Manager, now we're seeing something different. Now we're seeing that the network uh, is using only 2.3 megabits per second here of connectivity. So it's so much lower than the uh, screen capture at full bit rate. That's just kind of what I wanted to show here. You can see there was a little uptick here in the amount of video sending and receiving. So it's receiving 16 megabits per second. That's coming from the camera here. And then we are sending 134 from our screen capture that's running here. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good uh, example of NDI in and NDI out and the types of tools that we have available to measure the amount of networking bandwidth that we're using. You can see here Task Manager has this live Ethernet usage chart that we can use to map what we're sending and receiving. Now, in our last video, we plotted out devices and their IP addresses, but in a, when you're setting up an NDI production, you also want to do a similar chart where you're plotting out each NDI device and the bandwidth that they require. So you can see here, the very first thing, we've got an NDI screen capture on a laptop for PowerPoint slides. It's going to use 125 megabits per second of bandwidth. That goes from computer A, and it goes over the network to computer B. So computer A is using 125 megabits of its send capabilities, and the computer is using 125 megabits of its receive capabilities. So we're keeping track of the gigabit network switch, the switch that we have. We cannot go over 1,000 megabits per second on a gigabit switch, or things will just start to break down. Packets will get lost. In fact, New Tech and many other IT professionals suggest 25% headroom, meaning do not even attempt to use more than 75% of the available bandwidth, or you're going to be getting too close to having dropped frames and packet loss. Now, the next thing here, we've got two NDI monitors for camera operators. Maybe these monitors are projectors in your presentation space like we showed in our How We Use NDI at Stream Geeks video. Well, each of those is also going to use 125 megabits per second. So 375 megabits per second has been accumulated thus far. Let's say we've got another vMix system, and that vMix system is going to output NDI video in 1080p at 60 frames a second, which might even be more than 125 megabits per second. You Sometimes you have to do some testing, but roughly we're going to uh, account for 125 megabits per second. Look at this. We're already at 500 megabits per second. If we add another NDI monitor for an overflow room, that brings us to 625. And here is where and why the NDI HX uh, protocol really comes into play. We've got five NDI HX cameras. If we were using full bandwidth cameras, there's no way that that would fit on a gigabit network. But because NDI HX, as we just saw, bringing the video through a camera here, um, and you know what I want to do, Brian, is I'd like to show the NDI camera one more time. Uh, the live preview because I'd like to show this camera really quickly that we're using. So this is the ceiling camera right here that we're using that we pulled into OBS. So let me just show that really quickly. So again, right through OBS, that is the camera, right? So here's my hand. That's the camera right there. This NDI HX enabled camera is connected via SDI to our video production switcher. It's connected via HDMI to this television. So that from time to time, we like to see a full screen output. And then it's connected via Ethernet for NDI HX connectivity. You can also see here that we have a little label just showing the optical zoom and the IP address of the device. It's not really necessary to write down the entire IP address because every device on our network has the same first three quartets, but the last one is unique. So just wanted to show that there. Oops. And that's how we brought it in there. Now, looking back here again, there's that NDI HX source. 
and we go into properties again we have all that bandwidth opportunity there to adjust and the ceiling camera and the IP address are all loaded there. Just to re kind of reinforce what we're talking about. Getting to the end of this chart, though, with the suggested headroom, we've used 91% of the bandwidth available on a gigabit switch. So you can see it happens quickly. Now, one of the things you've learned already in this course is that there is an NDI screen capture for HX. NDI HX screen capture, and that will reduce the bit, the bit rate that is required and the bandwidth that it will consume uh, in this chart. So now there are becoming ways to use NDI HX to reduce the overall bandwidth, and that becomes even more important when we're using an existing network, when it's going into a corporate network, or you're already using your network for a lot of other things, and it's not dedicated just to NDI video. So in an, uh, another example here, which is the eSports example, we're doing things a little differently. Now we're using the NDI HX screen capture. And the NDI HX screen capture option, which is actually installed on this computer, and I'm going to use this as an example here, NDI HX. Again, it's available as just a little teeny window here in the bottom right. But with the video bandwidth, we've got some different options for going like super low, medium, and high using the HEVC, which is the H.265 compression. And that will reduce the overall bit rate necessary. So just to show you that really quickly, NDIHX now, instead of full NDI, bringing it down to 20 megabits per second. So we're doing six computers. Let's say it's a three-on-three esports -three e tournament. Uh, the NDI monitor is still using a full bit rate of 125 um, megabits per second. An iOS mobile camera, as you saw, that's really a fun uh, product to use. Three NDI HX cameras set to 20 megabits per second each. And then um, some normal traffic, right? Because now, now that we're using NDI HX sources, we can actually use normal, uh, you know, normal net network connectivity and still having the, the suggested headroom. So the key takeaways are that bandwidth is required to do all of this, to send a video over local area networks. NDI re basically requires gigabit connectivity. Now with NDI HX, it does seem that you might be able to do some NDI HX uh, video on a 10-100 network, but those are so dated, it is not recommended. There are multiple types of NDI sources with various Bandwidth requirements. New Tech and NDI and the developers over there, they know that you have to have options because you're building a table, you're trying to fit what you can in a gigabit. Maybe you have a 10 gigabit network and NDI HX opens up some new options. An NDI video stream can many times be way over 100 megabits per second, but NDI HX can bring that down significantly to almost 10% the size. NDI video streams are compressed. Remember that slide we looked at where SDI was uncompressed? Well, in order to bring video to a local area network, video is compressed. And the more compression that's added, the lower the video resolution and quality will become, or the lower the quality will become. And that is why NDI provides a lot of different tools. And in general, whether you're using NDI or NDI HX, it is designed to be high quality, low latency video for video productions that are demanding. Finally, when you're planning out an IP video system, you really need to consider the bandwidth that is available for your project. So that's it for this video. We're going to keep moving forward in the unofficial guide to NDI. I hope this video was helpful. Let us know in the comments if there are any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Don't forget to read the book to reinforce the topics that we have discussed today. This is totally free. You can download it in the links below. Let's move on to our next chapter.